Hi, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to continue our discussion about the knee joint kinematics, that is a knee joint range of motions. We had discussion on flexion and extension. In this video, we will be discussing about medial rotation, lateral rotation, and abduction and adduction in detail. Also, we will discuss a few pathomechanics around the knee joint related to the knee joint kinematics. If you wish to go into anything in particular, the time codes are given below in the description and in the comment box. And this is Tony's tutorial and let us move on to the knee joint kinematics. the knee joint range of motion and first one is the medial rotation and lateral rotation sometimes these movements are a bit confusing but here we will have the most simplified discussion which will make you uh, familiar and uh, expertise with these movements medial rotation and lateral rotation all right now as we discuss the flexion and extension when we started the discussion about flexion and extension we came into a conclusion we came into a point that is the axis of the motion was a trans epicondylar axis right in medial rotation and lateral rotation i just want to ask you which plane does the medial rotation and lateral rotation takes place can you guess the shoulder in shoulder medial rotation and lateral rotation takes place in which plane it takes place in transverse plane if anybody is having confusion in this we have a video on planes and angles exclusively the link is given below i suggest you that you go through that and come back right now let us move on and then this here a medial rotation lateral rotation takes place in the transverse plane right the transverse plane transverse plane and you know that the transverse plane movements will always be accompanied one by one particular axis of motion for example in shoulder the axis of motion will be a vertical axis yes the vertical axis the vertical axis so in knee joint the medial rotation and lateral rotation happens in this same the transverse plane the first thing to note right and the second thing the medial rotation and lateral rotation has a vertical axis of motion which we call here in particular the longitudinal axis the longitudinal axis of tibia the longitudinal axis of tibia right which in particular is the longitudinal axis you know what is longitudinal axis as i always tell it is an anchor axis perpendicular but sorry parallel to the long axis of the bond or to the bond right so this simplifies our discussion where we got the plane that is a transverse plane we got the axis that is a vertical or a longitudinal axis on the tibia now let us see the peculiarities of this longitudinal axis this is our media content and this is our lateral tibial contents the axis which I described now is passing through the medial tibial condyle or medial tibial intercondylar tubercle. The axis which I described for this motion is passing through the medial tibial condyle, not to the center of the both tibia and fibula, uh, tibia and medial condyle and lateral condyle, not to the lateral condyle, not anterior, but exclusively through the medial tibial condyle or medial tibial intercondylar tubercle. Right? That is the point that uh, we need to get into our mind. That is, the axis is passing through medial tibial condyle or medial tibial intercondylar medial tibial intercondylar tubercle right medial tibial intercondylar tubercle now you know that for any rotatory motion medial rotation and lateral rotation is a, a rotatory motion okay what you need you need a pivot right you need a center okay you have seen uh, rotatory movements like this everything will have a pivot a center around with the rotation takes place now here what is acting as a center 
am i confusing you no it is actually we are going like a story we need to now we are identified the axis we identified the longitudinal axis we identified its location and now we are identifying what is the pivot what is the center of this rotation and that point is the medial tibial condyle itself because the axis is passing through that right the axis is passing through the medial tibial condyle or intercondylar tubercle medial tibial intercondyle not lateral medial tibial intercondylar tubercle so what happens when medial tibial condyle is acting as the pivot you see if this is acting as the pivot and this is the free end the motion will be like this the movement in the pivot will be restricted and the center will be restricted whereas in the outer end this will have a greater arc of motion this you need to picturize in your tibia right and now we see that the axis is passing through the medial tibial intercondyle tubercle like this or medial tibial condyle so this is the pivot what will happen the movement around this pivot will be less and movement around the opposite end what is the opposite end the lateral tibial condyle the lateral tibial condyle will be larger right so the lateral tibial condyle will move around or through a pivot in the medial tibial condyle right this is generalized picture. Now you will understand detail when we are moving on to the flexion, uh, sorry, medial rotation and lateral rotation, right? In medial rotation, what is happening? You have medial rotation means what? And lateral rotation means what? Lateral rotation means this is the movement, the outward movement. The medial rotation means this is the movement, inward movement, outward, inward. Okay. Now let us take an example of lateral rotation. Okay. In lateral rotation, naturally what should happen? simply if this is not the axis nothing you need to worry about axis you just simply close your eyes and tell what happens in lateral rotation lateral rotation the lateral this is the lateral rotation right the medial tibial condyle the medial condyle should go anteriorly and lateral condyle will go posteriorly right can you imagine this one this yes so see can you see this one okay so uh for example, if you want to have a medial rotation, this should happen. This side should go like this and this side should go this way. So that means this medial tibial condyle should move anteriorly and this one should go posteriorly for the lateral rotation. But we saw that the pivot or the axis through which the movement takes place, the, the movement will be restricted. In medial condyle, the movement will be restricted. That's the only game of picture in this game. Here what happens in medial rotation, in lateral rotation, the lateral tibial condyle, you can see that the lateral tibial condyle moves posteriorly that's a clear from this picture but the movement in the medial condyle will be very minimal that means in lateral rotation in lateral rotation what happens eh? in lateral rotation of the tibia lateral rotation lr eh? the lateral tibial condyle lateral tibial condyle moves posteriorly a greater arc posteriorly a considerable range of motion posteriorly you can identify it whereas the medial tibial condyle moves slightly only only a slight range of motion uh, a slight degree of anterior motion this should have been equal but the axis is passing through this one and this movement is restricted so medial rotation or lateral rotation happens in our leg like this in medial rotation or lateral rotation in lateral rotation you can see that eh? in lateral rotation this lateral tibial condyle will move posteriorly whereas a medial tibial condyle will move only a slight degree anteriorly right that's only difference so lateral rotation once again the lateral rotation the lateral tibial condyles moves a greater arc posteriorly and it produce the lateral rotation whereas medial tibial condyle moves only a slight degree of lateral anterior movement now imagine the medial rotation can you guess what happens in medial rotation if you can guess you have to around this one right can you guess in medial rotation simply in normal medial rotation without this axis consideration this is medial rotation medial tibial condyle should move posteriorly lateral should come anteriorly 
right but here you have a restricted range of motion at the medial tibial condyle and medial femoral condyle respectively about the above this you have the femoral condyle okay you have the restricted range of motion so the medial tibial condyle moves slightly posteriorly whereas lateral tibial condyle moves a greater arc anteriorly that happens in medial rotation so in lateral rotation we have this one and in media rotation we have the lateral tibial condyle moving a greater arc anteriorly very good right and medial tibial condyle moves a less um, arc less movement um, posteriorly a less movement posteriorly all this happens in the longitudinal axis in the transverse plane don't forget that okay now let us once again examine this uh, medial tibial medial rotation which is the last one we discussed in medial rotation you see in pure medial rotation without this axis in consideration if it was to the center this should have been like this an equal degree of anterior motion from the lateral tibial condyle an equal degree of posterior motion from the medial tibial condyle now this one is restricted the axis is through that and this has um, this is away from the axis and it has a greater arc of movement so what happens in media rotation this one moves this much but this one still remains in that place it slightly oscillates or slightly rotates to a smaller degree right this is a simple thing this is what happens in media rotation and lateral rotation on tibia and femur right or in the tibio femoral joint now let us examine that with the help of a diagram the diagram can make you a bit more clear with this picture look at this diagram this shows the tibia in neutral you can see that uh, the both the condyles are neutral there is no movement of medial rotation or lateral rotation and you can see in this diagram this is showing about the internal rotation of tibia you see that the slight degree of motion is only possible at the medial condyle whereas a great arc is possible in the lateral condyle the exact opposite occurs in case of this external rotation whereas greater arc is possible same in the lateral condyle whereas in medial condyle only a slight degree of movement are possible now we take a forward our discussion how did we discuss the fib flexion and extension we described the flexion and extension then we went on to see the role of ligaments and menisci in flexion and extension the same strategy here when we have a same strategy things would become easy what is the role of menisci and what is the role of ligaments in uh, media rotation and lateral rotation ligaments and of course you can see that uh, um, like when this movement is happening you see this one is rotating the medial tibial condyle all the movements are taking place through a smaller area of contact that is through the um, the uh, axis okay but lateral tibial condyle has often often or always have a greater arc of movement and greater possibility to distribute its or dissipate the forces so this medial tibial condyle has an increased stress because the medial tibial condyle femoral condyle is also sitting there both of them has only a small degree of movement so that will restrict or uh, the movements as well as increase the contact force on medial tibial condyle only if you want you remember this point otherwise just forget that and these are all one of the reasons why medial tibial condyle or medial compartment we have a lot of problems we saw from earlier on was the angle of inclination and everything we saw that uh, there is some changes with the medial tibial condyle and this all adds upon to that and produce a greater deal of compressive and degenerative changes in the medial tibial condyle now as i told you our point of interest is on the meniscus right can you guess what was happening when flexion and extension was happening? If anybody is watching this video without watching flexion and extension, I have included the link here below uh, above. So kindly watch it and come back because that is going to help you more than listening to this and going to ba going back to that. So here in menisci, what is the role of menisci in internal rotation and external rotation? Media rotation, lateral rotation means internal rotation and external rotation, right? Yes. The role of menisci always in the body is to reduce the friction to ease out the movements so whenever the condyles are going to move through particular direction your menisci should accompany it that is what we saw in flexion in flexion when the femur is going rolling back posteriorly 
the main sky gets distorted posteriorly to ease out the movement so that always main sky is covering the surface. In extension, the main sky gets distorted anteriorly so that the femoral condyle is, has a free degree of motion and is always in contact. And here, what happens here in media rotation, you see in media rotation, okay, in media rotation, what is happening? The lateral tibial condyle is moving anteriorly. Along with that, the lateral femoral condyle also moves anteriorly, right? Now, what happens? This one should move anteriorly. So, this menisci over here, that is the lateral menisci, should distort anteriorly. So, in media rotation, the lateral menisci distorts anteriorly so that it accompanies the femoral condyle and the tibial condyle and is always in contact with that. Whereas in media rotation, uh, media rotation, the medial menisci will distort posteriorly because we saw that this is having a slight degree of posterior motion. So the distortion in the lateral menisci will be higher than the distortion in the medial menisci because this is a less movement in medial menisci. But still, we cannot neg uh, negotiate. We, we cannot neglect the uh, distortion in the medial menisci because femoral condyle is there, that is sitting on the menisci itself. Even though the movement in the medial condyle is less, the femoral condyle is there and that has to sit on this, and therefore the distortion would be there. Therefore, in medial rotation of the tibia on femur, what happens is that the medial menisci will get distorted. Anterior, the lateral menisci will get distorted anteriorly, medial menisci will get distorted posterior. This is simple like you know, when movement is taking place like this, uh, the menisci you know it is a wedge shaped thing. Okay, When femoral condyle is coming this way, if this is sitting as a wedge itself, uh, this has to move an uphill motion, right? This The movement would be restricted and after some times the condyles will be out of slip with the menisci so that this menisci will get distorted uh, anteriorly, right? And here the menisci will get distorted posteriorly. That's the role of menisci. The opposite happens in lateral rotation. In lateral rotation what happens here? Let us examine with the uh, bone itself in lateral rotation. The median menisci will distort slightly anteriorly, whereas lateral of menisci will distort posteriorly. That's the role of menisci in the tibiofemoral range of motion, that is in the internal rotation and the external rotation. I hope that is clear, right? Now we move on to ligament role in median and lateral rotation. Yes. About the ligament role. Okay. In menisci role, we saw that there is a distortion anterior and posterior. You just have to remember this one in your mind. When the condyles is moving to one direction, the menisci will move. In media rotation, in media rotation, the lateral condyle is moving anteriorly, so the menisci will move anteriorly, right? Whereas the lateral condyle in medial rotation, medial menisci is moving posteriorly, therefore the menisci will move posteriorly, right? And in lateral rotation, the lateral menisci will move anteriorly, posteriorly, lateral condyle will move posteriorly, therefore lateral menisci will also move posteriorly. There is nothing to confuse, even though that you got, even, even though you did not get that into mind, don't matter, doesn't matter, just remember this one. The movement will be always accompanying the movement of the condyle itself, right? Now let us move on to, as I told, the ligament rod. Now, when we look into the ligament rods, we see that this axial rotation that is the medial rotation or lateral rotation is possible due to some laxity in the ligaments you know that in all range of motion ligaments are not taught we saw that anterior cruciate ligament anterior band is loose at this point posterior band is tight we saw about medial collateral ligament lateral collateral ligament etc in different range of motion i'm not going back to that if you want just check back in the link above about the anterior and cruciate and the uh, lateral collateral ligament everything now let us discuss on this what happens is that we see in the range of motion that at extension, almost all the ligaments are taught in knee joint, all right? When ligaments are taught, these are not going to permit a great degree of medial and lateral rotation, right? In extension, ligaments are taught. Whereas in flexion, when from extension to flexion, that is from zero degree of extension to flexion, 
we see that almost most of the ligaments except some bundles get lax so when flexion is increasing the ligaments are going to be lax or loose they are not going to restrict the range of motion when that ligaments are not going to restrict the range of motion a greater degree of media rotation and greater degree of lateral rotation is possible so the role of ligament is this the ligaments are going to restrict media rotation and lateral rotation at full range of extension whereas from flex extension to flexion when it increases the ligaments gets loose and they allows a great degree of flexion and extend sorry media rotation and lateral rotation so we saw see that at 90 degree of flexion in flexion we have the maximum value of media rotation and lateral rotation and that value accounts almost about 35 degree zero of to 35 degree where we see that up to 20 degree it is the lateral rotation Whereas up to 15 degree, it is the media rotation. The lateral rotation range of motion is slightly greater than the media rotation, right? So we see that it is up to, um, like you call, uh, 35 degree a maximum, a 0 to 35 degree. Whereas uh, lateral rotation is from 0 to 20 degree. This is from 0 to 15 degree. And lateral rotation range of motion is slightly greater. Media rotation range of motion is 15 degree why it is maximum inflection that is because the ligaments and capsular ligament structures are relatively more permitting the range of motion in flexion and flexion but what happens in full flexion again you see that in full flexion the range of motion is going to decrease because again the ligaments and the capsular ligament structures gets taught so when it increases from 90 degree 0 to 90 degree we see that media rotation lateral rotation increases from 90 to 130 degree of flexion the media rotation lateral rotation decreases so the peak flexion is at uh, media rotation lateral rotation is at 0 to 90 degree of flexion so with that we wind up the discussion on media rotation lateral rotation remember it is happening in the transverse plane around the longitudinal axis the axis is through the medial tibial condyle or medial intercondylar tubercle and in both the movements there is the greater arc of movement of lateral condyle whereas less arc of movement of medial tibial condyle and medial femoral condyle men's sky will distort according to the distortion of the according to the movements of the tibial condyles if it is distort moving anteriorly the men's sky distorts anteriorly if it is distorting and post moving posteriorly meniscus will distort posteriorly and finally you see that the possible range of motion is due to the ligaments itself and the ligaments are taught in extension full and full flexion therefore there you have a less media rotation and lateral rotation whereas in 0 to 90 degree and especially at 90 degree you have a maximum degree of uh, flexion that is at a 0 to 35 degree all right and in that media rotation is 15 and lateral rotation is 25 now we move on to the next discussion that is the abduction and adduction in the knee complex <coughs> relatively abduction and adduction is of less range of motion and is less um, and is having a less degree of uh, abduction and adduction movements but let us see what happens in abduction and adduction in detail itself moving forward with our discussion on abduction and adduction abduction and adduction right this is the valgus and this is the varus movement right we saw that there are ligaments that is going to restrict the valgus and varus the medial collateral ligament and lateral collateral ligament As, uh, of course cruciate ligaments have some role in this same movement itself we see what is the let us see what is the plane of movement of abduction and adduction this is a bit confusing but we'll do it in an easy manner what is the plane of movement of abduction and adduction the plane of movement is already we had the flexion and extension in the sagittal plane right the media rotation and lateral rotation in the transverse plane now we have only one movement one plane that is the frontal plane now abduction and adduction takes place in the frontal plane 
and you know that every movement in the frontal plane takes place in the AP axis. Again, I tell you, if you are not aware with the frontal plane movements or planes and axes, definitely like a look back to our previous session videos and be thorough with that. That is going to help you a lot in your biomechanics discussion. That is a frontal plane movement and AP axis movement, right? That is what abduction and adduction happens. Okay. Now you see him for this abduction and adduction to happen. Actually, it is because of the permission of this ligaments. The ligament elasticity or ligaments are actually responsible for restricting the abduction and adduction range of motion in this knee joint. You know that is a valgus stress. The abduction is restricted by your medial collateral ligament and the varus is restricted by your lateral collateral ligament. Now the maximum possible range of motion that is possible in extension is only 8 degree that is you know that in extension ligaments are taut so maximum 8 degree of medial abduction and adduction is only possible in extension whereas in flexion 13 to 20 degree of uh, movements are possible whereas in flexion 13 to 20 degree of movements are possible 13 to 20 degree of movements are possible right even in that abduction adduction accounts for about 15 degree and adduction only about 5 degree this is a just an approximate value we don't know how a strict value for this measurements so maximum possible range of motion in flexion for abduction and adduction is 13 to 20 degree in that a large account is for the abduction itself that is 15 degree adduction is only about 5 to 5 degree or 10 to 5 degree uh, whereas this is 2 10 to 15 degree of range of motion all right now let us see for example so this is the medial condyle and this is how the tibiofemoral joint is there so this is this movement this is known as the abduction movement that is uh, uh, moving outwards okay that is a valgus movement and this is known as the adduction movement okay and this movement will definitely be restricted by your medial collateral ligament as long as it is intact if a patient is having a great degree of valgus movement you are definitely sure that medial collateral ligament would be injured right if the patient is having greater degree of uh, uh, adduction movement you can definitely be sure that uh, the lateral collateral ligament is lax or is injured all right so in abduction what happens is that this is the movement that is happening the tibia is moving outward is going for a valgus force whereas in adduction the tibia is moving interiorly that is going for a varus movement right so therefore we call abduction as valgus movement and adduction as varus movement and this plane this movements occur in the frontal plane movement this plane itself the plane in which the bone are lying that is in the frontal plane movement itself and the axis is ap axis for the movement point to remember in this when there is a ligament laxity for example you have a medial collateral ligament laxity huh? in valgus force you see what happens to the medial collateral ligament medial compartment it is going to be distracted whereas lateral compartment is going to be compressed so in uh, medial rotation uh, sorry in, in abduction or in valgus force what happens there is an increased compression in the opposite compartment that is in the lateral compartment when there is a ligament laxity in the lateral compartment or lateral collateral ligament in abduction in adduction or virus force what happens medial compartment will come into friction that is a greater force in the medial compartment whereas here there will be less force so the discussion on medial rotation and that rotation is intensive one and a vast one whereas the discussion on abduction and adductions are very minimal because of the very minimal range of motion but of course we need to discuss all this because next session we are going to discuss much more important thing that is the locking and unlocking of the knee for that we need to know all the range of motion in particular so summarizing valgus and virus or abduction and adduction in abduction the medial tibial condyle get uh, distracted uh, if there is a ligament laxity otherwise the movement tibial condyle the tibia will move laterally that is the tibia will move for valgus in adduction the tibia moves uh, interiorly this is only a slight degree of motion even if you cannot tell that the tibia moves 
right? That is only 8 degree in extension and 13 to 20 in flexion and 15 degree approximately for abduction and 5 degree approximately for 5 degree for adduction. Of course, this can be controversial. Someone, someone in among you can ask me that this is not 15 degree. Of course, there can be chances. Some study says that it's 15, some says that it's 5 and some says that this is 10, this is 10. Whatever it is, uh, what is the most possible literature and most uh, commonly uh, discussed one I mentioned here that is a uh, 15 degree. Okay, and this takes place in the frontal plane and this takes place in the AP axis of movement. That's all about the uh, media rotation, data rotation and abduction and adduction range of motion. Finally, few things that we discussed with regard to the range of motion is one is genuine recurvation. That means that you have a degree of extension that is 0 to 5 degree. If that is greater, if there is an increased extension or range of motion, that range is known as increased knee extension that is known as genuine recurvation. And what about the menisci rod? In the menisci, we saw that the menisci is distorting anteriorly and posteriorly in flexion and extension. For example, in flexion, it is distorting posteriorly. What happens if it is not distorting posteriorly? Definitely, it can remain uh, as a threat to the flexion and extension and limit the flexion and extension because it is having a wedge shape. So this means uh, during the flexion, during the flexion, if here the menisci is going to remain as a flexion uh, wedge itself, this femoral condyle cannot move uh, to uh, the final degrees of flexion. But this goes to distortion. And not just that it can limit the flexion, it can also go for menisci tear, right? So menisci tear can occur if there is no proper distortion of the menisci during flexion and extension. First one was genuine recurvatum. Second one was menisci tear, which is commonly occurring in flexion and extension if there is no posterior and anterior distortion. Similarly, extension, if there is no anterior distortion, it can limit extension and more than that, it can cause tear in the main sky anteriorly. And of course, about the ligaments we saw, if there is an increased valgus force, medial collateral ligament would be teared or there can be a laxity of the medial collateral ligament. Whereas in the next one, that the lateral collateral ligament is a weak there can be increased lateral rotation, increased uh, virus force, right? So these are the most important things with regard to the uh, pathomechanics of a knee joint range of motion. We have of course a brief discussion, of, uh, sorry, we have of course a vast entire topics to cover, but uh, due to the um, lack of time and with specifying to the syllabus, we will restrict it to this. Later we will on discuss in detail about the pathomechanics when we discuss about the muscles around the knee columnus. So that's all about today and if you like the video don't forget to click the like button and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please subscribe to my channel so that you are updated with all the latest updates in our channel